Welcome to Microcontrol Systems Online Training Facility. This module will cover getting started. Before starting your system, it is important that you will spend about an hour to possibly two hours doing a pre-checkout of the entire system. When MCS built the configurator, it was built according to the specifications that you supplied identifying the inputs and outputs to the system. MCS completed the building of the configurator and then did a complete simulation test on a running Magnum. All the safeties were verified and a wiring diagram was supplied for each printed circuit board. We now need to verify that the wiring matches the configurator that has been built and tested. Starting will then be academic. An extremely important one to two hours time is spent here. Do not skip this test. The Magnum Chiller Support System will support up to 20 compressors and up to 4 steps per circuit. It will support up to 80 relay outputs and 80 sensor inputs. It will support up to 20 analog outputs. There are 230 set points and there are 100 alarms. The Magnum hardware will support 10 relay outputs, 12 sensor inputs, 4 digital inputs, and 4 analog outputs on the main processor board. The MCS IO board is capable of supporting 8 relay outputs, 8 sensor inputs, and 1 analog output. The MCS RO10 will support 10 relay outputs and the MCS SI16AO4 will support 16 sensor inputs and 4 analog outputs. The Magnum software consists of an MCS Connect program which is written in Java. It also consists of an MCS Config program which is written in Visual Basic. This program is only available if you have gone to an MCS training class. On the Magnum there is a small piece of software that we call a bootloader. It is used to load the firmware into the Magnum. The Magnum firmware itself consists of three separate parts an HVAC system, a centrifugal system, and a refrigeration system. A typical system would be called 9.01F.hex. When installing the Magnum system, you must mount the equipment in a dry location. Avoid mounting it in front of high voltage. You should separate the high voltage from the low voltage areas. Avoid mounting in an area where you are right next to a frequency drive, if at all possible. High voltage wiring should be kept separate from low voltage wiring. If you have low voltage wiring where you are crossing high voltage wiring it should be done perpendicular to the wire and then where you are running parallel should be about six to eight inches away. All wiring to sensor inputs must be shielded cable and the shield will be tied to the magnum or the magnum input output boards and it will be cut at the outbound end. Low voltage shielded cable, as I mentioned, should be run perpendicular to high voltage. Allow adequate room on each side to run wiring when you're mounting the boards. Avoid splicing shielded cable if at all possible. Important, provide a good earth ground.
When doing the wiring, you may wire the line and the neutral to the MCS-8 or the Magnum. And then you may jumper the line and the neutral to all of the other input-output boards. You will wire the ground to the MCS-8 or the Magnum. And then you will wire each ground directly to ground. Important, do not jumper the grounds. A ground wire should be connected to each board and then directly to ground. If you have to splice a shielded cable, do the following. Splice in an area where there is no high voltage within approximately 3 feet. Splice in a dry area. Splice all wires, including the drain lead. Okay, you may solder or butt connector the connections. If you are going to use butt connectors, stagger the wiring so that all of them do not end up at exactly the same spot and you have a very large bundle. The foil shield does not need to be connected. You will tape all individual connections and then tape over the final splice. Using the keypad display, you will need to go to passwords. You will need to be able to verify set points. You will need to be able to do a lockout reset. And you will need to be able to look at the status for the chiller and the circuits. During the factory testing on the relay outputs, the main power to the compressors and the condensers should be turned off. Control power to the micro and the contactors and the solenoids should be on. You may need to put together a separate extension cord type system in order to do this. On the keypad or display or using MCS Connect, you need to get authorized. Put each relay output in manual on and verify that the correct contactor or relay or solenoid has pulled in. Do not skip any step. You must verify that if you're on a screw compressor and you turn on a load solenoid, it is, it is the load solenoid that came on. If you are on reciprocating compressors, you have to verify that the right unloader has come on, etc. Then put each output back in auto. Note that when you turn the compressor into manual on, you have to be paying attention to the contactor immediately because it is going to lock out on a safety within a few seconds. For digital sensor inputs, you will turn on and off the flow and verify that the sensor input is correct. You will turn on and off the run stop switch and verify that it is correct. You will turn on and off the emergency stop switch and verify that it responds correctly. You will turn on and off each circuit disable switch and verify that the correct circuit shows up as disabled or shut down. Then put each digital input into manual to verify the results. Check the proper response. The response should correspond to either a run stop, a yes no, an on off, an OK trip, an open closed, a low high, an off reset, a normal alarm, or down or up. And the name and the response should be self explanatory. On the analog output, you will put each output in manual at 25, then 50, then 75, and 100 percent. And then you will set it back to zero. It will be critical that when you are testing an electronic expansion valve that someone outbound is holding the valve for circuit one when you put that valve in the manual to verify that it is in fact circuit one ZXV that is moving. Okay, then when you're done, you will put everything back into auto. 
Okay, verify that all analog sensor input values are within reason. Like the entering and leaving liquid should be about the same temperature and if the system has been off for three or four days, the, it should match the area temperature. Amp sensors should read zero. Humidity should be based on the location and the current weather conditions. Okay, to test the transducer wiring, you will remove the transducer cable at the transducer and then verify that the transducer cable you have removed reads minus 99.9. Repeat this for each transducer and then reconnect the cable. Verify that all transducers are reading correctly. Verify all relay and analog outputs and sensor inputs are now in auto. Verify the set point values. So you should review the target, the full load amps, the suction, the discharge, the oil, and the condenser set points that they all look reasonable. Then you should clear the lockouts and turn on the main power. Make sure that the run stop switch is in run. Make sure the flow switch is on. If the controlling temperature or pressure is greater than the target, plus the control zone plus, the unit will start to load. The control status will reflect the current state of the package and the circuits. You can set the transducer offsets if required, but you should do it at running pressures. That is, allow the system to get down to its operating position before testing any transducers and putting in any offsets. You should not require any offsets for amp sensors or temperature sensors. If they are not reading correctly, you need to go back and re-verify the wiring. Okay, then you are going to verify the operation. If it's a screw compressor, verify the load and the unload pulse rate at the bottom and the top positions. Remember that a semi-hermetic screw will be based on oil pressure, which is different when the machine is unloaded versus when the machine is loaded. If the screw verify the amps plus or minus values to make sure that they balance between the load and the unload pulse and the amp dead band does not allow hunting. What you're looking for here is that if a load pulse is made, and the unit drifts too far, then the amp dead band is not large enough and the machine will hunt. This is the end of the Getting Started presentations. For questions, please contact MCS or your manufacturer.